Hello. Uh, today we're going to make a guide on how to create a RuneScape private server Colorbot with the use of C Sharp and an OCR library called Iron Tesseract. Uh, the main difference from most guides on YouTube or whatever is that this one is purely made with C Sharp, while most other scripts make use of Python or JavaScript. Um, it was more of a uh, let's see if I can do a challenge and it's only made for educational purposes. So this is not made to um, make an actual bot on RuneScape. It is more to a uh, more learning project. As you can see, um, the main features is following. It, we can select the color of an enemy. Uh, it will attack that enemy. And in addition, we can add a couple strings, which is a couple lines of text uh, as a white list of items we want to pick up. For example, I want to pick up the raw shark right there. And in that means I can add them in a list and, and I will pick it up. Um, just keep in mind this script is extremely basic. Um, just for the case so I can easily explain what's going on. And people can easily experiment it in their own spare time. Because it's more interesting to, um, to play with it yourself than explain everything bit by bit. Of course, this uh, once you got the, the knowledge of how to make something like this, it can be expanded into multiple bots, like making a fishing bot, or a woodcutting bot, or a power mining bot, or whatever. Everything can be achieved once the knowledge of how this was created uh, is acquired. Uh, as you can see, we got a main screen right here with the bot. And in addition, we got a screen on the right giving status information about what the bot is currently doing. Um, as you can see, I'm also running on a private server right now because I don't have any intentions on playing on the actual servers because they probably have really uh, great bot detection in comparison to what most RuneScape private servers have. So let's get started. I will explain everything bit by bit and let's hope you learned something. And of course, I will uh, put the code in the description so you can have fun with it. You can see it's still quite a lot of code. So um, I'm going to take it out step by step. This will make use of C Sharp 9, which is one of the latest versions. Um, it's quite a bit different from the older versions, so don't feel intimidated if it looks different. Um, so we're going to take it on step by step. So the first step we're going to do is we got the main loop right here, which is what we're going to execute once starting uh, the program. This will obviously run this command right here starting. And once we're starting, we're going to hit the initialize function. Our initialize function is only used for setting up Iron Tesseract, which will make use of the English language, which is what uh, RuneScape uses most of the time with Tesseract version 5, because uh, higher is better, obviously. And then we got the main function right here. Uh, this function will keep looping because I got a while through loop, which means it will never uh, quit. Uh, so you got to stop it yourself. It's, it's not a way of stopping. Uh, and the first step is getting all the window information. As you can see, we make use of the process name to find our client. Uh, as you can see, if I hover over it, it says Xeros, which also says in the left corner, top left corner. So we're going to use that. And then we're going to use the find window function, which is a Windows only function. Sorry if you're using Linux, it's not going to work. Uh, and find information about that window. If we're unable to find it, we're going to throw an exception. And if we do find it, we're going to put all the information we can find into a struct, which is basically like a class, but with, with, without functions. Um, and we're going to put it in there. And once we got the information, we will be putting it, and we'll be storing it, and we'll be calculating the dimensions of the window, which is obviously the height and the width of the screen that we'll be using. We'll be storing all this data so we can access it later. So once we found the information, we find the uh, we're going to get the bitmap of the main screen, which is going to be our client. And we're obviously going to use dimensions we previously found, and we're going to use a format of uh, 24 uh, BVP, which is the highest uh, resolution we can store in our bitmap. And we're going to use 24 instead of 32 because we don't do not want to store uh, the alpha, which is the transparency. It's no use for that in RuneScape. And then we're going to make a copy, and then we're going to store this data into a class. 
And once we got the information, we can finally start doing something. Um, so this is the main uh, functionality of the app currently. It's quite basic. Uh, we're gonna check if we are fighting. We're gonna check if we're currently still fighting. And at the same time, we're gonna check for drops. And if we're currently not fighting, we're gonna check for a new fight. So it's quite basic. This is gonna get interesting. We're gonna take a sub image of our bitmap, which means we'll be taking an image of the top left corner, for example, as we can do right here. And we'll be using this to check if we're currently fighting. So if I'm fighting this brightness right here, you can see the top left corner, something is gonna show up right here, which means we want to take an outline of just this box, nothing else. So basically we're gonna take a bite of the, the massive screen we just took. As you can see, we got the width here, uh, the, the X and the Y and the width and the height. And we're gonna start with the, the, the Y, which is the height on 20. So did we do this because we wanna skip the wall care text, which displays on default. And we only wanna get the box right here with the brightness. Because if this uh, exists, then we'll be able to at least grab some kind of text out of it. Um, OCR is still always a best effort um, library or tool, which means that you always got to help it in order to find the best data possible. I do it here by scaling up the bitmap with a factor of two. So uh, we got a bit more data to work with, um, which is better, which is quite better for the tool. Uh, once we got the bitmap, we'll pass it to Iron uh, Tesseract, the OCR input, uh, to retrieve text from the bitmap, which is means we only want to pass the cutout part by attacking the enemy from this to see if there's any text. So we're gonna pass it to our iron input, OCR input, and then we're gonna get a result, and we're gonna return that result because we only wanna use the function for one very thing. That's what we wanna do. So we're gonna check if it's not empty. So we're gonna check, okay, do we have anything in that box? And if we do, then we'll see, okay, we're fighting currently. So that way we're gonna give up we're fighting or not. At the same time, we're gonna have some bit more complex code right here. So we're gonna check if we got the drops. We're still gonna use the same bitmap, as you can see right here. And we're gonna loop over the X and Y coordinates, which means we're gonna go, if you follow the cursor, we're gonna follow this and this pattern to check every single pixel on the screen. As you can see, it's quite intensive which means it's really not optimized, but it's uh, one way to certainly get any kind of data. This is not very important. So we're gonna loop over the X and Y coordinates, and then we're gonna uh, loop over a list of colors, which we retrieved from uh, the client itself, which is quite easily, because for example, if, let me just throw this one away real quickly, as you can see, this, this uh, enemy is quite pink. So we're gonna use, I use Sherrick for example, which allows me to use control print screen to select an outline of the enemy. So we're gonna use like this. And then we're gonna paste it into GIMP. And then we got the, the color picker tool right here, which allows us to pick uh, the color. And then we're gonna put this into um, a color to RGB. And it will give us a red, green, and blue uh, color combination. We'll be using this to detect color on the screen. This is what we'll mainly be using in order to uh, do our color detection. As you can see, I got a couple of colors here. For example, I got some coins. I got like a note. Uh, for example, I got some bad boons. Um, of course, feel free to add some comments so you know exactly what you're dealing with. You can play with this by repeating the same process I just did and changing the item colors. So if you go back for a second, we're gonna see, okay, uh, we're gonna loop over the colors with our uh, X and Y coordinates of the bitmap and see if they are similar. I got this little uh, function right here, which will take the absolute of the color and we got a little tolerance. So we got a little uh, arrow margin, for example, if, if you're not detecting anything because it might be changing a little bit, you can set the tolerance a little bit higher to uh, allow it to uh, detect the color a little bit better. 
So for example, if we found the color, which is similar to the one on the current X and Y coordinates, then we're going to move the mouse to the very location. We're going to wait for a little bit, which means that, for example, if I do this and I hover on the bones, oh, wait, the bones just disappeared. Um, we're going to kill this uh, prime that we were quickly. As you can see, I'm hovering over it right now. It says raw shark uh, with a color from the node which I allow it to detect. And if it's if it's uh, if it's familiar, if we if you want to get this this color of the node right here, if we allow, we're gonna move it to the location, and then we're gonna sleep for a little bit because the moving itself requires a little bit of time before the screen gets updated. If you do it right away, it's not gonna work. So basically, we hover a mouse over the item then the if this if this uh brian red moves here for a second please move thank you don't be rude to me thank you um so we're gonna get a new print screen a new bitmap of uh the the, the screen with the mouse hover over the item which will obviously show in the top left corner that it says take raw shark so we're gonna pause that bitmap to OCR again. We're gonna take a screenshot of that text uh, by using this. And then we're gonna try to isolate the color of the text. As you can see, uh, for example, the brine mat is yellow. So we wanna isolate that color by only accepting the yellow and anything else we're gonna discard. I got it, I got it quite, I got a function which is double here which means that we search for the text, then we're gonna make everything white, and then we're gonna make the text black. And we do this because uh, Iron Tesseract or uh, Iron OCR likes the black uh, text on the white background, and that's the reason why I do it. Feel free, you can uh, print out this bitmap, and then you can see if uh, what exactly happens, step by step. Um, so feel free to do that. And just like before, we're going to scale the bitmap with a size factor of 2 to help our uh, OCR tool a bit. And then we're going to pass it to OCR. And then we're going to uh, read the input from the OCR again and check the text. So for example, if I hover over this, I expect to get raw shark because that's the color that we're searching for. So I made a small list here. This is a loop to check over the items we accept. For example, small coin bag, or lobster, raw shark, dead rune, coins, and crystal key, which is obviously also in uh, combination with the colors we want to search for. And if those two match, we're going to return true, which will uh, say we're going to click on the following item. Then we're going to move our mouse to that position. Uh, we're going to click on the position we just hovered over, I think. And then we're going to wait a bit. And we want to make sure to return because we don't want to uh, keep clicking on the same spot multiple times. And if we're unable to find it, we're going to be like, uh, I'm adding a little extra, uh, basically, smartness to the bot by saying, okay, we're going to stop looking at this very position. Please stop looking at uh, position 420. Uh, and then uh, you for the next 20... Um, Y pixels right here, we're going to stop looking because otherwise, for example, if we got some bones right here, if we put bones, just remember the boost right here, and it finds the blue color, it's going to keep sticking to the color. So we're going to say, okay, you're not allowed to view this color for the full, uh, for 20 more pixels, so you can hover on to the next tile. That's kind of the idea, which is exactly what we're doing right here. And uh, so we're going to assign that here. And then we're gonna break because we don't want to continue. And that's basically the way we pick up items. And as you might know, um, fighting is very similar to checking for the drops. We're gonna check for a possible fight. We're gonna yet again hover over the main uh, main screen. Then we're gonna see if the colors are familiar to the ones we want. So, for example, this one is quite pink. So we're gonna select this color. We're gonna see if it's familiar, and if it's familiar. We're gonna click on it and then we're gonna say, oh, look, we found something. We're gonna move the mouse to it. We're gonna wait for a little bit. 
I'm gonna get a new image to make sure that we're attacking. As you can see, I'm using the text, the, the color of the attacking text, which means attack uh, Brian red. As you can see, we're gonna get that text color and see if we uh, can attack, as you can see. We're gonna check if we got the attack text. And if we do got the attack text, we're gonna click on it and we're gonna say we're fighting. And I'm gonna wait a little while because um, you're not gonna kill it in a second mostly. So I've got a little timeout and then we're gonna return out the function. And then we're gonna say, okay, we're sleeping. Uh, time to repeat the main loop. We're gonna go back to the top. We're gonna get the win information. We're gonna make a new screenshot. We're gonna check if we're fighting. If we're fighting, we check if we're still fighting and we're gonna check for drops. And in that way, we're gonna keep repeating over the same loop. So as you can see, it's quite robust, which means it's very simple. It's very simple to make adjustments by the use of picking colors and experimenting with it yourself, which is quite inviting. Um, I'm gonna add some comments for you guys so you can learn from it a little bit more. Um, and of course, feel free to experiment it, experiment with it, play with it, and get familiar with it. And if you got any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, well, that's it. Uh, good luck guys on your adventures and uh, I hope you learned something from it.